I want to talk about engineering problem solving in Python. And uh, this slide deck is geared a little bit to people who come from a MATLAB background. Um, but even if you have been using Python, maybe it's good to see another way that, that you can use it. Um, Python uh, is used in a lot of different ways. Right, it's used in like building backends for websites. It's used in scraping the internet. It's it's used for production code. Um, it's even now kind of used for some embedded systems, and those are all great. Um, that's, however, very different than how we are going to use it in this class. In this class, we are not going to do a production level of Python. We are going to use Python as a scripting language to play, go back and forth with data. Um, which is something that MATLAB does very well. Um, so Python is an interpreted mostly um, high level general pur purpose programming language that is with an object oriented approach. Python's flexible. Python's not too rigid. It's, it's like your friend that kind of goes with the flow, right? So Python will allow you to do a lot of different things. Um, it's an interpreted language. Um, it's a type of programming language for which it's instructions execute directly and freely um, without previously compiling a program into machine language instructions. What does that mean for us? It means that Python starts at the top of our script and goes down line by line by line by line by line, just like MATLAB does. Unlike C, which compiles the whole thing and then tries to run the whole thing. It's high level. Um, so it's strong abstraction um, from the details of the computer. You almost don't need to know anything about how computers work to use Python. Uh, that has its ups and downs. Um, Python is almost readable, right? You can just read it like you read English and it will make sense sometimes. Um, general purpose um, just can be used for writing software in the widest variety of application domains, right? There are more specific programs like C or C Sharp or even LabVIEW, right? These are very application specific programs. Python is very general purpose and that general purpose comes with challenges but also benefits. Um, it's object-oriented-ish. Um, it has a concept known as objects, which contain data in the form of fields, right? And we'll talk about that. Um, we don't use object-oriented in the way that kind of computer science people use object-oriented, um, but that's fine. It's perfectly there, and you can definitely do that. Um, so Python's uh, design philosophy emphasizes kind of code readability um, and is notable for its significant use of white space. A lot of other codes don't do that. Um, it's dynamically typed and garbage collected, which means you just use it and you don't have to worry about memory allocation. Right? It just does all of this stuff for you in the background. Um, the code re readability refers to, you know, that it's easy to kind of read by humans. White space refers to the use of white space in code. In MATLAB, you don't have to indent anything. You can just write everything left column adjusted, and it'll run. Python won't do that. Your indents actually mean something. Um, it's dynamically typed, uh, so it executes many common programming behaviors at runtime um, that static programs prefer to run during comp comp computation. Um, and then it's garbage collected. It's just kind of memory management. Uh, if you come from a MATLAB environment, that won't matter because you're also um, garbage collected. All right. Python is kind of the famous line here, um, free as in beer and free as in speech. Uh, so the concept of like free beer, right? There's never free beer, right? There, there's always, someone always wants something. Um, and then there's the concept of free speech. This is actually the first amendment of the United States. It's incredibly dull, dull like font type wise and then only on one line, which I find fascinating because the document was really wide. Um, and then Richard uh, Richard Stallman, who's kind of like a famous computer scientist, right, um, had this um, concept of think free speech, not free beer when you talk about open source software. And that means that I can look at the code. It doesn't mean I have a right to the code. You're going to download Anaconda. That doesn't mean that you can turn around and sell Anaconda. There is a license that you agreed to when you download it. That license lets you use it without cost. Um, but like when they put Anaconda on these computers, they have to go through a different process, right? 
just because it's free for you for personal use for education research business doesn't mean it's free for like an academic setting right so when we talk about um, free software open source software and understand there's a lot of levels and layers on that for example over christmas break i am from a small town in iowa i went home and i took pictures of 100 year old tractors and i put them on wikipedia right they are released under a creative commons license Someone then shares in my family chat a TikTok video of a guy talking through tractors. And I'm like, oh, I'll watch that. And boom, it's my pictures, right? Does he have the legal right to do that? Technically, no, because I took that picture and he did not credit me. Now, am I going to sue someone by for taking a picture off Wikipedia and sharing it on TikTok? That is a very different discussion. But in all assets. I still own the copyright on that image. I have released that under Creative Commons copyright, which just means if you attribute me, attribute it to me, you can use it, right? So um, think about that. There are technicalities. Like if you start a company and you start giving out Anaconda to people, you might have to make sure that you fall under their rules. But for you on your laptop in this class, perfectly okay. It won't be an issue. Okay. So what is this Anaconda? Um, Python is a language, very good language, but it's just a language, right? It allows you to do a lot of things. Python, for instance, does not talk to your compiler, talk to your metal on your hardware. For that, you have to compile down to C. And so if you were to get Python running on your own from scratch, you would have to start, um, uh, Python, C Python, right? This is a compiler. Now, if you want to talk to your compiler um, back and forth, uh, you're going to need something else called IPython, which allows you to talk and interact with your compiler back and forth. This is already getting complicated, right? We're up to three programs and we're barely just using Python. Um, now, I want to do a matrix. It's really hard to do any math or science without a matrix, right? pretty fundamental. Python has no support for matrices. None. Absolutely none. Um, but NumPy has support for matrices. And so I can add that in. Right? Now, I might want to share my code or, or use or interact with my code in a way that I can do some typing and plotting um, and like bundle it up and send it to someone else in an example. And for that, I can use Jupyter. So now I'm up to Python plus five, four modules that I have to install. And I have to make that every, I have to make sure that every single one of these modules talks to all the other modules, right? This is what Anaconda does for you. They are a company, they built the software and they automatically manage this. You can do this on your own through PIP. I would highly recommend against it um, because it works fine until it doesn't. And then it's really hard for you to figure it out, or it works fine and then you ship your code to someone else and it doesn't work for them. And did you take documentation on all the different versions that you pip installed? Probably not. It's just good to have Anaconda and be like, I installed Anaconda 2021.5, what are you running? And then you can go to on Anaconda and download historical settings, which we've had to do before in this class because stuff gets shipped and there's broken components and there's no way to test everything. Okay. Then we move out to um, a next layer of things. I want to do some signal processing. 2D interpolation means fast Fourier transforms, right? Um, I'm going to add SciPy to that, right? So I want to add SciPy into my mix. Um, I want to do plotting. And I kind of come from a MATLAB environment, so I want to plot in the style that MATLAB plotted. That's matplotlib literally MATLAB plotting library, right? Um, and so that allows me to do some plotting. Uh, if I want to do some data management, kind of using cool structures, kind of a very data science thing, you can use pandas. I'm not a big fan of pandas. It's a personal choice. You can be. You don't have to code the way I code. Um, my problem with pandas is it, it's just very structured, and I just want to play around with data sets a bit more. Um, so that's kind of the next level out. And as we go out, we get more and more um, complicated. Uh, so this first layer is like fundamentals. I'm adding talking to hardware and matrices. 
This next layer I'm adding plotting, data management, signal processing. Next layer out, I'm going to add sklearn. That is most of what our class is going to be in. Our class uses sklearn, scipy, matplotlib, numpy, right? Um, but sklearn is where all of our machine learning code is in. Fun note, SymPy, not as good as MATLAB Symbolic Solver. Absolutely not as good. But something I used a ton in my PhD, um, came down here, found the original paper for it, and the first author of the SymPy package used to be a professor here in mechanical engineering. Now works for Castle Financial, probably makes a lot more money than he did here. Um, good for him. Good for him. Say that with my pretend smile. Um, Scikit image, image processing in Python, right? Uh, and then you get out one step layer and it's super, super niche, right? Are you tracking planets? Maybe you need AstroPy. I don't know if you're going to need that in this class. No one's ever used it. Um, biological DNA things. Um, I don't know what Dippy Pie is or Nippy Pie. Maybe that's like modeling rabbit ecosystems. <laughs> um, I'm sure they do great. Sun Pie and many, many more. Um, so that's kind of the ecosystem. We have to build all of that. Not fun. We're going to rely on Anaconda. MATLAB 2022A, 2023A, 2024A. You pay for that convenience, but it is convenient. Um, all right. So real quick, we'll use IPython Spider. We haven't talked about that, but that's how we code. That's our IDE integrated development environment. NumPy adds support for multidimensional arrays. SciPy for scientific computing. Matplotlib, sklearn, TensorFlow. Um, TensorFlow adds for neural networks. All right. These are distributions. Uh, Python XY is what I learned on. I don't know how active that community is anymore. These are sometimes called stacks. Anaconda is a great one. It's not the only one, right? And there's probably better ones, but very common, easy to use, has a navigator. You can install things. You can still pip. Um, also installs a brand new clean inver version of Python on it because your operating system uses a Python, uses Python. Like Windows uses Python to call things. You do not want to be coding on the same Python install that your operating system uses because you change a parameter and then nothing on your computer works, right? You want a different version of Python for you to do your back and forth with. Um, Active Python uh, is used for like web development and thought Python. Um, I actually still see around from time to time, but these are all typically these all, I think Python XY is like only has a free tier. Everything else is a paid company. Anaconda's out of Texas somewhere. Um, and then they have a free tier and their goal is for you as a company to pay for one of the higher tiers and levels of support, which is perfectly fine. And I hope they can make some money. Um, all right. So why not just use MATLAB? MATLAB is wonderful. Um, pros works right out of the box. Um, code is well managed and packages don't conflict. Um, widely used in engineering and computing, right? So, so is Python now, and I think it's important to learn both. I don't think there's a right answer. Um, well formulated for linear algebra with simple commands. There is nothing more beautiful than MATLAB for linear algebra. I once spent like three weeks trying to do some um, um, eigenvalue solvers like um, in Python, and I did it like in two hours in MATLAB, right? It's, it's really good. Um, fast implementation of code for complex computing problems. If you got the money or you have the full project, you just click machine version module. You click parallel computing module. You right, and then you just you just keep clicking, and the price keeps going up. But that's okay. Um, not at the bleeding edge of machine learning, but that's okay. And that's really not even true. I mean, even MATLAB now has large language models. I'm going to cross that out. It's close enough. It's close enough for anyone who uses the word engineer in their title, right? Um, cons, not freer than speech, freer than beer. You can't reproduce it, but whatever. Each module must be paid for separately. All right. In an academic institution, we are spoiled. Yes, I want the parallel computing toolbox. 
that box costs two thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever. Part of our site license, right? Um, not cons. Not at the bleeding edge of machine learning. You know, it's a pro and a con. <laughs> Depends how you see that. Um, difficult to keep licenses updated across multiple machines. I'm sure you are better with making sure you turn on all your computers once a month. And when you open up your laptop on an airplane, all of a sudden your license hasn't expired. Um, I'm sure you are great at that, but I have real struggles with it. Um, lets you write poorly structured code. You just, um, code is slower than Python, that's personal experience. Um, other people tell me, no, MATLAB is absolutely faster. And I think you just kind of have to know how to code in it. I don't really think it's exceptionally. Slower. Um, here's just a quick thing about white space. So in MATLAB and Python, these white spaces matter, mean something. In MATLAB, you can just shoop, um, shift it all to the left, right? Um, or you can highlight it all and hit Control-I, which automatically indents it, and you make people's code look better. 